Welcome to uh, episode one of Middle Georgia Agora from here at beautiful Buckwheat Farms Magic Emporium and Ballroom. Uh, this content is going to be different from our usual content. It's going to be centered around our newly formed Freedom Cell and our community exchange system. Uh, I am, of course, the head wizard here at uh, Buckwheat Farms. And uh, my guest today, my beautiful granddaughter and lovely uh, and smart granddaughter, Chastity. And my handsome and equally intelligent grandson, Tyson. Say hello. Hello. Hi. Okay. First of all, let me ask you guys. Uh, which one of you guys want to explain to uh, the viewers uh, what a Wendy's is? Awesome. Okay, go, yeah. go ahead, Tyson. Uh, Wendy's is like a, uh, he tells us all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> and, uh, it's like a rant that he goes on yeah, about uh, the smallest thing to like Wendy's. But how did, it, how did it come up with the name Wendy's? So uh, he tells us all kinds of stuff, and then we were, me and Chassie were riding the car one day. And uh, we went by Wendy's and I said, see guys, this is what Wendy's is. And, uh, Started talking about weird yeah. things about Wendy's. And so it became a Wendy's when I go on about rants and stuff. So today we're going to see how well they listen to my rants, if they really tune me out. And how many Wendy's we can go through. How many Wendy's? We won't go through many Wendy's today. And uh, my first question, okay, on the grandpa scale, where do I land between Bad Grandpa and Rick from Rick and Morty. Where where would I be more towards? So like cool Grandpa, or like on like one to ten. Yeah, would, like would I be? Yeah, would I be more like Bad Grandpa or would I be more like Rick from Rick and Morty? Right. Rick. Yeah, I'm more like Rick. I'm okay. I'm kind of dangerous, but I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. That was okay. So now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave my children along with. <laughs> You wouldn't leave your, no, that doesn't sound very good. You know that. See, she has a way of saying things in an inappropriate way that makes it sound really bad. She, you, yes, yeah, she would leave your children alone with me. You just would, would be afraid of what you would come home and find what's in, in their minds as far as, yeah, all kind of freedom ideas. God forbid. So anyway, the serious question. I'm going to do some real questions here. And I'm going to, I'm going to get first some easy questions. See, I, well, you guys have been listening. Um, do any of you, do either of you know the difference between an outlaw and a criminal? Okay. An outlaw is like somebody that breaks the law but doesn't really see the, um, doesn't, it's not actually a crime. There's no victim. Bingo. A no criminal victim. is someone who actually like stabs somebody. There's a victim. Right, right. Right. And see, that's 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 really good. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say like the same thing. Kind of thing. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, and, and I believe you because I know I've talked to you guys enough about it. So um, let's see. Um, so second, do laws actually stop crime? I'll let you know. Like, so you can see somebody going sixty, like sixty-five miles an hour, like forty something, and like there's hope. Crime, then not I mean, right. it's not stopping them from doing it. Right, the, yeah. the law is not stopping them from doing it. Right, it's just it's just basically a, a, a tax on people that want to drive fast. Because, see, your Uncle Bob and I talk all the time while we're riding together about how there are these people that fly up and down the interstate. You see them, you go, you know, they just zoom past you when you're driving. And we always talk about those are the guys who have enough money and they don't care, they just get the ticket, they'll pay it, and, and they're, all it is is just an excess tax on them for speeding. It doesn't make them slow down or anything. So anyway, I wanna move on here to, to get into some, some of the, the deeper, deeper, deeper questions. Because one of the things about, about no victim, no crime, is that a lot of the things that we have on the books, a lot of the laws we have on the books, are where there's no, no victim. So it's, it's, we're basically locking people up for, for matters of, of opinion. Right? I mean, seriously. I mean, like the drug laws. The drug laws are based on a majority rule, but there's there's no basis. In fact, all the all the, the reefer madness scares and everything have, have proven to be so false. So that's why individual sovereignty is such a vital thing. And that's why. Okay, let me ask you this, guys. Do you guys know what uh, freedom cells are? Freedom cells. Yeah. And this is a new one because I've just talked about this today. And this is. So, uh, yeah, you have any idea what Freedom something? cells are peer-to-peer -peer groups organizing themselves in a decentralized manner 
for the collective goal of asserting the sovereignty of group members through peaceful resistance and the creation of alternative institutions. See, I yes, knew it. you knew it. Yes, you did. <laughs> and that's now. Does that make sense to you? It's peer-to-peer -peer groups, which means it's just people meeting together. Um, there's a there's a, a whole video on this that I'll link to maybe in the comments section below, but. Um, but they talk about setting up groups of, and ideally they say eight. You know me, I like nines, right? So I'm saying like nines. And these are people that you, that are together, that you know that you can count on. You're doing the things to pull yourselves outside of. Um, you've heard of people go, going off grid, right? As far as going off the grid for the power system, off grid for the water and all that. Well, this is actually going off grid from government systems. And that we don't, we are, are people who can understand that we're mature enough, we're, 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 we're kind enough, we're compassionate enough, we care enough to actually be able to, um, to live voluntarily. We don't need to be governed. And, and if, you, if you talk to your friends, most of your friends don't have any, any uh, idea if they want to punch anybody or, or, I mean, you know, there are a few of the, those guys, right? But that's going to happen and the laws don't stop them. The laws don't stop bad people from being bad, right? So, so what, what stops bad people from being bad? Well, what, stops, well, what stops good people from being bad is that they're good people, right? I mean, basically people are. I mean, if you talk to most people, they just want to be left alone to live my life the way I want to live. And that's, that's what we're talking about here is, is the ability to do that. Because what happens is, is a group of Karens come along. Sorry, Karen, if you're out there. But Karens come along and they say, well, we don't like this group doing that. So we're going to get together and vote so that they can't do that. And all of a sudden they passed this law and they've made a whole group of, of, of outlaws out of people who were, were outlaws before. So what happens with these freedom cells is we get together and, and there are groups of people who are doing things to prepare for getting off of the system. And when I'm talking about getting off the system, I'm talking about removing our money from the, the taxable system to actually starve the government. And it's what we call underthrow the government. It's a peaceful resistance, not a shot fired. We're not about revolution. We're about evolution. Because this is going to evolve into a higher state of being. So we started this freedom cell here called Middle Georgia Agora. And uh, I'll have the information online. And I'm going to be on with some more information uh, about exactly how we're going to start a freedom cell. And if you're in the Macon area, how you can get involved or, or how you can start your own freedom cell. Uh, but so... Are you guys familiar with the community exchange systems I was talking about? I mean, I talked a lot about to Tyson, I know earlier uh, about it, uh, about the barter, about the barter system and everything. Well, well community exchange system is basically uh, what it is. Let me, let me see here. I want to go to there. No, I won't go there. I'll try to explain it to you. Um, it's, it's basically where you don't use money. A barter system is you've got some eggs. Tyson's got some cheese. Tyson wants your eggs, you want his cheese, and you swap, right? And that works out pretty good as long as Tyson's got what you need and you've got what Tyson needs. But what if you don't need cheese? Now you've got to try to find some, some way to, somebody who has something that you want to unload your eggs. Well, see, that's where money came in. Well, what happened with money was it got tied to debt rather than, and, and money, and this, this uh, page that I've got here here um, on the CES website, it talks about the difference between money and, and the talents. Well, money is kind of an artificial placeholder, but the talents have no value whatsoever. So instead of this happening, say you agree to sell your eggs to me for or in exchange for 15 talents. So I give you the 15 talents. Now Tyson says he will, he will sell you the cheese for 10 talents. And so you can Take that 10, and 50, uh, 10 of those talents that were credited to him. And it sounds like the same thing as money, right? But the talents don't actually exist. They're just a medium of exchange. Kind of in the way kind of like cryptocurrencies are, right? They, I mean, they don't exist. But there's no stored value in them. So they don't gain value. They don't lose value. All they are is basically pl placeholders. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? And I don't want to get too in-depth with this because I'm going to talk more about the community exchange system as well. But um, do either of you remember where I said uh, the guy that started the community exchange system where he escaped from? His 
name is Tim Jenkins, and uh, he escaped. He was he was uh, against apartheid. Was locked in the prison in South Africa, and he and, oh, yeah, and yeah. he and his he and his friend escaped um, by making keys out of wood. Well, um, we're gonna I'm gonna wrap this up here. Um, let's wait a minute. Let me see. Uh, let me finish up here because I want to ask you this one kind of a personal question for you guys to, to think about. Um, you guys know I'm not a doom and gloomer, not a scary kind of guy. I'm a real positive guy, right? I think we're in for some rough patches ahead just because I, I watch how things go. I watch how the economy is going and everything. How do you think um, a rise in prices will affect your family? What, 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 do, you, what do you think? I'm like, if all of a sudden it costs you 10, 15 percent more to go to the grocery store, is it going to affect your family? Right. It's going to affect what you, how much you buy, how much you, what you eat. Right. Um, how much you spend, so you won't be eating out. So then, then there's a, a, a trickle down effect, right? Because then the people in the restaurants won't be making any money, and they won't be able to pay. And so, I don't think it will get full blown in, in, in this country. Like, um, if you guys have ever heard of what happened in, in uh, Venezuela, did you hear about the, 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 the you know, where they're actually breaking into the zoo and eating zoo animals. And the, I mean, it, people are starting, it was getting bad, it was, seriously. And, and and I don't think it will get here be, because there were people that were far wiser than me that have done a lot more preparations than I have. So what I'm asking you, have, have your families individually, I know your dad started a garden, your dad hunts. Do you guys, do you guys have a garden at home or anything like that? Or? I don't know. Yeah. See. See. And, and so. So. What would. What would your family do if all of a sudden, either you, you can't afford to get the food, or there is no food? Yeah. Because. So you can't afford to get the food, then you're not even going to the grocery store. So then the grocery store will never pay who they buy the food from. Right. So then. Right. Well, what's going to happen to your family though if you can't go? There? I mean, you're going to be in. in, in yeah. Right. No. You guys have probably got some relatives around there. Though. Do any of them uh, have? Yeah, my grandfather does. He farms, right? See, see grandpa, grandpas are, are smart about that shit. Uh, my, grand, my, grandpa, my grandfather, uh, actually, uh, not the one in there, and not, not my dad's uh, father, but my mother's father, he, he actually had a heart attack working in his garden. He was out in his garden and, and passed away. So what were you going to say? Oh, he's got, he's, he's got a garden there. Yeah. So, so, and that's another thing that we're talking about with, with um, with not only the community exchange system, but but also with with our um, with the Middle Georgia Agora, the, the, the Freedom Cell, is that networking of having people where you can come in and actually have something, a safe guard, so that, and again, there are people like me and your grand, grandpa, and others, like I said, far wiser, who've done far more preparing, that are gonna soften the blood, that have seen this coming for a while. So anyway, um, so I'll be back soon with uh, more content explaining fully um, some steps to forming your own uh, community uh, your own excuse me your own uh, freedom cell uh, also about establishing a community exchange system we'll be doing more videos on this channel on the content also I'll be posting them on, on my Odyssey page and uh, also on my uh, discord channel all right uh, peace out until next time love you mean it bye